Hey guys, how's it going? Creperi in here. We have a Diablo 4 video for you guys once again. Now keep in mind, I am recording this right after a two-day almost straight play session and streaming and all that. And it's been fun, but I'm, you know, I'm a little bit spent. It has been quite a wild ride. And rather than focusing on, you know, small topics and making a bunch of, you know, short videos, I'm going to basically give you guys the uh, full briefing of what went down with the server slam event, which is a two-day um, uh, recently announced play session weekend of Diablo 4 and we get Diablo 4 in like two three weeks or something so it's coming right up and uh, we're gonna start with the beginning and there are a lot of changes if you played in like the open beta stuff and you were like oh I'm definitely gonna play this well you might want to reconsider a few things. And I'll go over my journey of reconsidering some of those few things. So, first off, we're going to get into the interesting parts of patch notes. Not not too long ago, they made a post on the Diablo 4 uh, forum things, the news community site they have. Open beta retrospective transforming feedback into change and you know we all saw this we all read this and this is the the changes that we were going to get for the server slam and you know i'm starting to read through it's like barbarian a flat 10 percent passive reduction wow whirlwind does more damage double swing more fury wow that seems pretty good wow that's exciting all right read through the sorcerer oh there's some sorcerer nerfs Charge Bolt damage increased. Oh, mana cost decreased. Well, maybe I'll try Charge Bolt. Decrease the damage of ah, Chain Lightning. It was it was a little bit stronger than the other skills. That's true. Decrease the cooldown. Oh, yeah, Incinerate was unplayably bad. Uh, Firewall will now spawn underneath. That means more frequently using the Enchantables. Wow, that's pretty good. And even things that, you know, were nerfs. Minions will die more often, requiring players to utilize corpses more often. Wow. Corpse mechanics. Wow, increase. Buff, buff, buff. All right. Well, that seems pretty good. Let's log right in and see what happens. Well, they have this thing in Diablo 4 where they data mine the patch when it becomes downloadable. So there's a few sources of these. Honestly, there isn't one that I found to be complete, but I just want to quickly go over some of the incomplete ones because, you know, no one did a great job. It was a bit short notice. Thing is, no one really expected that these patch changes would be that different from the data mined version of the game that we got now versus a few weeks ago. So just for Barbarian, just, you know, you know, stun a little bit, a little bit more fortify. That's, you know, it's not bad. Lucky hit chance, Hammer of the Ancients goes up. You know, the, the violent Hammer of the Ancients. Wow, I guess no one was using Hammer of the Ancients. Whirlwind, 25 cost per second. That's a little steep, but the damage is up, which is pretty good. All right, so far it is, you know, it is in line with what we saw there. More Fury Double Swing, all right. Oh, what? wait, hold on, what are these? Upheaval, Lucky Hit Chance increase, okay. Direct damage with an enemy using not upheaval causes the next one to deal instead of eight stacking 10 times. So it does 130 instead of 180. Massive upheaval nerf. And not only this for upheaval, but there were massive nerfs to legendary powers, primarily the powerful ones for Barbarian. The one that allowed upheaval to stack to a ridiculous amount yeah, that one is just barely better if you're playing an upheaval build rather than some of the other ones. Like I said, this list is not complete. Iron Skin absorbs more maximum life. Well, that sounds pretty good. More, wow, Iron Skin buffs. Okay. Challenging Shout, Duration nerfed. Challenging Shout, Thorns nerfed. Rallying Cry, Effect nerf. Rallying Cry, Bonus, Effect nerf. Resource from Rallying Cry, nerfed. War Cry, duration nerfed. Nearby Allies duration, nerfed. Um, the bonus of War Cry, nerfed. The War Cry Life as Fortify, nerfed. Kick, nerfed. Leap, sure. 
Iron Ma uh, Maelstrom? I don't know. You know, it is, sure, whatever. Uh, Wrath of Berserker, a little bit different. Okay, you remember how they made the patch about it being tankier 10%? Reduction to Elites, nerfed. Um, Thorns, nerfed. Uh, booming Voice, the duration of War Cries, because they it's a double nerf. Uh, take less damage during uh, the shout skills. Uh, super nerfed. Like this, this thing. Like, your shout skills called enemies to deal. It used to be 24 at level 3, now 12. This change alone completely reverses a flat 10% passive damage. Okay, you get the idea. All right, that's just Barb. And I'll, if we're being real, Barb had it easy. Every single class has been nerfed. Every single class. No one escaped the nerfs. And especially Sorcerer. You know, if we go down here... Hydra. Lucky Hit Chance was nerfed. Lucky Hit was horrible. If you're not familiar with Lucky Hit on Hydra, the Lucky Hit on Hydra is... Every single hit for the entire duration landing has now 53 instead of 7. This is completely unrealistic. One of the worst lucky hits in the game. And the damage went from 30 at level 1 to 12. They even nerfed the duration. 30 to 12. 12 damage. This is like, it's like a druid skill now. What am I supposed to do with that, right? Well, the answer is not use it. Hydra builds are, I'm sorry to say it, completely dead. Yeah, I think Hydra is completely dead. It is just barely an okay skill, but with the fairly powerful cooldown abilities that Sork has, I don't see it. Speaking of which, we had enormous nerfs. 15 per second to 3 from that elite thing that you had to keep shields up. 5 second barriers to 2 second barriers. Absolutely brutal nerfs. The Sork build that I featured uh, a few weeks ago is basically no more. Uh, that build is completely gone, and I actually spent most of my weekend uh, kind of figuring out what I want to do. And I'll give you guys another, you know, little re review here. Eventually, I wanted to go to the challenge of beating a Shava, and I did so. I farmed some pretty powerful gear, and I ended up make making a firewall sorcerer. And before I get into too many of the details of the build, nearly every single part of the build was nerfed, but nearly every single part of every build was nerfed. And this is something that I do believe requires talking about. The patch notes, roughly, that we got did not in any way correlate to the game version that we got. They left out, like, 90% of the changes, and conveniently, those changes were nerfs. Serious nerfs. I give you guys one example that alone reverses the survivability buffs of Barbarian. But here's another one. Gems were nerfed. Again, I'm not saying that these changes are bad. I just, you know, yo, Blizzard, give it to me straight next time, okay? If Path of Exile is pretty good with this, but even when they slip up, people complain. Those patch notes were, were a little misleading. Remember these gems? Yeah, these gems gave like 5% life. So they got nerfed to like 2.5%. Uh, that kind of sucks, right? Well, there is one gem that got nerfed harder than any other. Do you know what that is? Damage reduction while fortified. That was, I don't remember exactly, but it was also about 5% for the lower quality of the gem, which is, you know, what we have in the beta. And it's now barely over 1%. It's almost an 80% nerf. That was a colossal part of the survivability for fortified characters. I don't even think fortified characters are going to use fortified damage reduction gems. They're so bad. Just use life gems, right? Most of the healing in the game is not flat. It's based from skills and a percentage-based form. So, like, wow. Huge nerfs. 
And there was a pretty interesting one. I didn't actually bring it up, but it was on Reddit. A lot of necromancers were complaining about minions. And, uh, man, I really should bring it up because it has been quite a ride as well. Now we have, you know, all these necro hotfixes. They got hotfixed. Basically, the necro minions went down like crazy. And you know what? You know what happened with the Necro Minions? I will tell you what happened with the Necro Minions. And I think it is a story worth telling because you know what? A few months from now, a lot of people will kind of forget about it. Do I miss Necromancer? I don't know where Necromancer is on this list. Necromancer, okay. Well, they say, they admitted that they reduced the survivability of skeletons with the idea that you have a more engaging play style. You know, you will be using the corpse mechanics more often. Well, hey, what the hell is that? Increase the damage and life of skeleton mages is buffed! Wait a second. Did they actually buff a build in this beta? Not just a build. One of the strongest builds from the previous beta. They actually did. What they did is they reduced the skeleton's survivability. I don't know if it's life. I don't know if it's damage reduction. I don't know if, if it's the amount of stats that you got from a gear. There's basically no transparency on what actually makes the minion what it is in the game. So let's not pretend like we know. Nobody knows. But their survivability went from pretty good to real bad. But their damage actually went up. And this is in an environment where every other form of damage on every other character went down. So I played a Necromancer, and I ended up making a Necromancer where uh, all I did was trying to keep my minions alive. I went with the dual curse, which I thought was pretty cool. Actually, it worked out really well. And I can tell you it was the highest DPS character I played in this beta, but I did not play Rogue. In terms of the class tier list and all that, um, yeah, I think Twisting Blades is a real outlier skill. I don't think anything is on the level of Twisting Blades Rogue. But below that, I don't know if it's going to be Sork. It might be Barb. It could very well be Necro. Okay, it's probably not Druid. But Druid is, like, uh, cool and stuff, I guess, if you want. And it got nerfed, too. But so did everyone. And Druid maybe got nerfed less than the average other class, Copium. Possibly. Anyway. Um, so for Necromancer... They reverted the nerfs. They reverted the nerfs for survivability. In my opinion, the minions are not as tanky as they were in previous patch. They're still like way less tankier, but it's a lot more playable. However, I have a sneaky suspicion that they actually reduced some of the damage. And it's kind of an interesting thing. Um, I feel like they very deliberately uh, nerfed the survivability in order to keep the damage because it's a high maintenance playstyle, but it's very rewarding. It could have been the highest DPS build in the game. But I didn't really want to bet on this build. I didn't really want to bet on the questionable survivability. That's still pretty questionable, by the way, when content gets harder in the higher difficulty levels. Um, but it looks like it's fixed-ish, and it looks like they're somewhat on top of it, kind of. I really thought about playing a Necromancer, but yeah, um, I can't do it. I I don't want to like deal with the mystery option of, you know, will minions work in higher difficulty levels? Because if they don't, then I'm effectively playing a Sork that doesn't have movement skills or powerful defensive cooldowns. And that's just not going to happen. So what have I learned about Sork? Sork is massively nerfed massively nerfed the basic skills are largely untouched and that actually makes arc clash one of the best aoe skills available and fireball one of the best single target skills available um, the fireball on explode is still the same which is really nice you can have you know effective and powerful clear speed builds with sork i think even if sork doesn't top the damage charts and it might not it very well might not we don't really know where it's at i think you will have a fast farming experience so i think sork will have a place somewhere 
Uh, flame shield, uh, I think they up the damage and they lower the duration from scaling with levels. That's fine. I don't really use it for a high duration. Teleport is basically unchanged. Even on a Shava, when you have like the one and a half screen, it still, it still goes the full screen. Um, teleport, I think, got very slightly nerfed for like the true triple screen teleport across, you know, yeah. So that's fine. Totally fair. Uh, ice armor, I think, was nerfed, but it's still super strong. Um, I don't even... I think they nerfed the damage building up the barrier. Uh, Frost Nova was nerfed. Uh, it's longer cooldown. Um, uh, the cooldown reduction from killing frozen things is is worse, but I think the freeze is for three seconds instead of two, so it's, it's like a little bit better for that regard. Hydra is dead. The cooldown build is beyond dead. Don't even think about trying to attempt the cooldown build with Ice Blades. Forget about it. Uh, Ice Spear is about the same. Uh, sorry, Lightning Spear is about the same, which is pretty nice. Um, align the elements. Protection. I would say that Sork got their survivability nerfed by like 95%. Okay. It is so much worse than the previous time we played it. And yeah, they effectively nerfed every single skill on the build I was planning on playing. Every single skill. But to be fair, they did that with Barb as well. They did that with Druid as well. I played Landslide Druid. I played a uh, Thorns Barb with War Cries. So, I don't know. Uh, possibly someone at Blizzard is a real dedicated Crypt viewer. So, I guess... Uh, the rest of the video will cover the future nerfs of uh, the Sorcerer class. Maybe. Maybe not. I do feel that outside of, like, Twisting Blades, there really are very few outliers. I spent an exhaustive amount of time trying to figure out what I want to play two, three weeks from now. And the decisions are tough. I went through all the data mine information I could find, all the experiences, as much info as I could possibly, you know, process. And I think there are three builds that I'm considering. There is a firewall build because firewall is a high damage skill. Um, you just have to, as I mentioned in the previous video, when you're running through, you need to kind of sidestep, do a firewall perpendicular to your character, and it's pretty hard to do because you can't click out here. You have to click next to your character, so, and then you want to walk along the path. So the playstyle is not for everybody, but you know what? For mana efficiency per total damage, firewall, with a now 5% chance for two firewalls, it's pretty good. You know what? Firewall is a very high damage skill. Um, and there is another part of it. There were uh, some data mine stuff for like the Paragon passives. And I feel like fire does really well in the Paragon system. Um, all the different uh, elements, they kind of have their categories, their passives. Uh, the burning ones work the best. The burning one has one where you can scale your burning off of your int and crit damage, which is fantastic to be able to use crit as a damage over time build. Uh, and the burning passives are like increased damage to burning enemies and take reduced damage from burning enemies. It's just stuff that works. It works on the trash mobs. It works on the bosses. It just works on everything because you can burn everything. So they're just very effective. And I would say that in general, their passives are quite good. So a build focused around lots of defensive cooldowns and lots of firewall and stacking it, I think is going to be very legit. The other build that really caught my eye originally was a cold build uh, where you use Frostbolt to gain maybe a little bit of mana if you need it. You use the Ice Shards enchantment. Ice Shards automatically conjure and fly towards frozen enemies. And it's pretty easy to freeze if you do a lot of cold damage. And Frozen Orb, whenever you cast a non-basic skill, 20% chance to launch a Frozen Orb to nearby enemy. Pretty good. And the bulk of your casts would be Blizzard, and it would trigger the other two casts. But the idea is that we get Avalanche. 
your frost skills have up to 10% chance to make your next cast of ice shards, frozen orb, or blizzard consume no mana and deal 40% increased damage chances doubled against vulnerable. So basically, you get some lucky hit procs, you scale your lucky hit, and you get constant blizzards that cost no mana and deal additional damage, and if it doesn't have too much of a pressure on your mana, which it shouldn't, when cast above 50 mana, blizzard durations increase by 4 seconds, which essentially is 50% more damage. And blizzard, as a baseline skill, 120 with 25 extra to frozen, well, that's pretty good. Here are the problems. I have tested it, and Blizzard has no scaling from crit. It is a pure damage over time skill. However, there's nothing that increases a damage over time from a cold source, because it's not like burning. It's just damage over time cold. So there are very few scaling mechanisms. While the base skill is extremely strong, I have to think to myself, if I'm scaling this character with significantly more gear, with Paragon passives, how will it work? Initially, I was a bit, you know, gung-ho about doing the cold thing. I looked at the Paragon stuff. The cold-related passives, they're not quite as striking. There's no notables that really struck out as being particularly powerful to me. And a lot of the uh, damage and damage reduction is conditional on chilled and frozen. So my question is, do I really need to take less damage from targets that are chilled and frozen? No, they're going to be chilled and frozen. They're just not really going to hit me. Do I want to deal more damage to targets that are chilled and frozen? Sure, that's great. But here's the thing. Bosses in Diablo 4 are not affected by any form of crowd control. You can't slow them, you can't chill them, you can't freeze them, you can't stun them, you can't do anything to them. You just can't. That's how bosses work in Diablo 4. So when I have reduced damage taken from chilled enemies, well, that's just not going to do anything against bosses. But again, if we go back to the fire passives, you can burn bosses so that less damage taken from burning targets will work on a boss fight. The way that crowd control is implemented in boss encounters in Diablo 4 is any crowd control effect builds up the stagger meter, and when the stagger meter is full on a boss, the boss kind of just sits there for a few seconds, and during that few second time interval, they are effectively under every crowd control. So they're slowed, they're frozen, they're stunned, they're immobilized. And some, some you know, uh, legendaries give you bonuses to these things, and some give multiple bonuses. So it's not worthless to have chill and freeze when it comes to trying to hit bosses. But, you know, when it comes to not getting one shot by that boss, it makes a big difference. Because I don't really care if the staggered boss is doing less damage to me because it's chilled. Because when it's not chilled, it's going to do more damage to me than if I got the burn passives and was playing fire. So I feel like the cold skill setup is much more tailored to clearing dungeons and much less tailored to actually killing the bosses. And that is pretty evident even when you're trying to play them. The other small setback with cold is... The lucky hit chance of Frozen Orb went from like 25 or something to... um. Four. Yeah. Now, Lucky Hit is a pretty deceptive stat. Sometimes Lucky Hit will give you the value of each hit of the skill. For example, I am pretty confident that Charge Bolt has a uh, 20 Lucky Hit per bolt. So you, if you hit all five, very good Lucky Hit chance. I think. And some skills are like the entire effect. If the target gets hit with every single ability from the lucky hit, um, it's like the Hydra effect, basically. Like Hydra is 53 lucky hit. So the full 10 second duration of Hydra, every single Hydra head hitting the same target total has a lucky hit chance of 53. Horrendous. Completely you know, unapplicable. Well, I don't know which one it is, but I'm inclined to believe that the lucky hit chance of four is a lot lower than four. 
And no, you can't scale it additively with like lucky hit chance. Increasing your lucky hit chance multiplies the base value of the skill. If a skill has, has a poor lucky hit chance, it is very difficult to increase it. If I had 100% lucky hit chance, Frozen Orb's lucky hit chance would be eight. Okay, and if you're wondering, well, if you don't know how it works, then what are you talking about? Well, good news there. Meteor, lucky hit, 8% chance for a meteor to fall on enemies. Well, I had that passive and I was using Frozen Orb and I cleared like half of the dungeon here and uh, it didn't proc. Like it, it, it didn't proc. It didn't proc even once. So basically, the Frozen Orb proccing Avalanche in the cold build idea, yeah, that wasn't really going to happen. So those are the setbacks with cold. Now, I'm not saying that cold is going to be a bad build. I think cold is within a margin of error that it could be the best build. But there's a few issues that I couldn't really get past. The fire build I am still considering. The other build that I am considering is one that is based off of stuns and lightning. So uh, they buff Charge Bolt a lot. Uh, Charge Bolt actually is the highest damage single cast mage skill. It's a mouthful. Release five bolts, 28 damage each. That's going to be at level one. And then hitting an enemy three times, you do 24 damage to them. So at level 1, it's like a 150 skill, and it's instant. It just happens. You deal extra damage to stunned, or 20% less damage taken from the target hit by them. Very cool. Lightning, it tends to have damage reduction just flat out, and lightning is just hit-based. So you can scale it with crit very simply. You can make use of the overpower mechanics. And the enchantment effect of Charge Bolt is pretty interesting. When you stun an enemy, 40% chance to release three Charge Bolts. It's not quite a full cast, but Charge Bolts are pretty strong. Charge Bolt is uh, melee, by the way. If you're wondering, well, if it does the most damage, Crypt is going to get nerfed. Oh my god, it's going to get nerfed. Well, you know what? It might. Because I don't really know. The, the Blizzard's just nerfing whatever I showcase in my videos. Also incinerate. Oh my god, this skill is life-changing. Anyway. Um, so yeah, the idea is how do you stun stuff all the time? Well, while I was leveling, I just did like a, an arc, arc Lash build. And Arc Lash is really similar to Charge Bolt. Arc Lash is the best basic skill. Charge Bolt is the highest damage core skill. The thing is, both these skills are basically melee. Incinerate is not quite melee. Fireball's very far from melee. Frozen Orb's very far from melee. Ice Shards freezes and is far from melee. Chain Lightning can hit something three screens away. And Charge Bolt does the most damage, but only if you're doing it right in front of you. But again, Shock Skills have the ability to manipulate the damage, the stun. So I thought I'd make basic attack character. Every 10 times I use Arc Lash, it stuns for 2 seconds. Well, here's the thing. When we get level 30, which is not too far from where we are in, in the point that we've had betas for, when you use a cooldown, enemies around you are stunned for 0.5 seconds. That's the enchantment effect for Arc Lash. Now, if we play a build centered around every single defensive cooldown available, including like a low cooldown teleport. It's pretty nice. Put some points in there. Uh, we can get this to work all the time, basically. And every time we stun stuff, the charge bolts will go off. And there's actually a data mine unique that you stun targets wherever you end your teleport. So if there's like 10 mobs and I just teleport in place, it's going to stun all those 10 mobs, each of them, twice and there's a paragon node where you get 10 mana each time you stun something 
So you kind of get where this is going. It's uh, it's a pretty fun build. Lightning normally struggles with like AOE clearing. It's like pretty good at dealing with a few targets. Not specifically like one target particularly well. It's kind of like a weird build. But I think that mechanic is very powerful. Um, for clearing anyway. And Unstable Currents is just a really crazy burst skill for single target. So maybe the single target will be enough. And the uh, Lightning Mastery, Verse Mastery, close enemies take 10% increased damage from your shock skills and deal 20% less damage to you. Critical Strikes increase these bonuses by 25 for 3 seconds. So it's very, very powerful. It's a very high stat build. The passives for Paragon for Lightning are otherwise pretty mediocre. Fire is really a standout with Paragon points, but who knows? It's a couple of weeks out. They're going to be ones we'll have to be patient for. But ultimately, um, I've had quite a bit of fun this weekend. It's certainly been a big learning experience. It looks like the game will be uh, at least uh, a good bit more balanced. Um, I am going to play Sork. I cannot with confidence say that Sork is going to be the best class. I definitely did say that two weeks ago, but it looks like things have changed. I think Sork can be the best class. I think the damage is still quite good. I think the survivability is still... Honestly, it's one of the best. It's just not like... It's not like 10 times better than the next you know, the next option. Uh, the survivability is within the range of the other um, characters. So I do appreciate the active role that the developers for Diablo 4 are taking in rebalancing the game. And if they are going to make drastic changes, it is probably best that they do them before the game actually releases. So that's also good. But for the full hat trick on that to get the full crypt props, I personally would much rather uh, have the actual patch notes listed in front of me, not just the good things. Yeah, uh, I think a nasty surprise is not a welcome one, in my opinion. Hope you guys enjoyed yet another Diablo 4 video, and we will be having quite a few more of these when the game actually comes out. Take care, and we'll see you in the next one.